Welcome to Ladies Enrichment Club Worldwide, where we support women out there in business, in their personal life, and help them to grow and to enrich their lives. Today, we have a special guest with us, uh, Mandy. She's from South Africa, and she will be introducing herself. Hello, Mandy. How are you? Hi. Lovely to see you. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure. You can go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're from, yeah. and what yeah. you do. Lovely. So, um, yeah, I'm Mandy. I'm 51 years old. I'm from Cape Town in Seapoint. Um, I work on a range of things, but my main practice is um, mindfulness. Mindfulness forms, it's at the heart of everything that I work with as a coach. So I'm a master coach with Comenza, which is the coaches and mentors of South Africa. And I also supervise on a mindfulness program at Stellenbosch University um, for the Institute for Mindfulness South Africa. So it's the first mindfulness training in Africa. Um, a university level and that's in the faculty of medicine and we are currently I think on our fifth cycle if I'm not mistaken we've just started our fifth cycle um, so I supervise some students on that and um, I'm also working on um, one of my areas that I really love is recovery um, so recovery from codependency specifically but I do work with addiction um, and that program and coaching uh, mentorship program is around uh, taking personal responsibility, cultivating inner intimacy in the, in the case of codependency, which is an outwardly focused obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, and so those are sort of the areas that I, that I work through and I have um, an interest in cultivating insight. So in, in organizations and what that even means, resilience and insight for leadership. So I do a five-part process in organizations also, which seems to, yeah, it's been well-received. So that's really nice. Sounds like you are very busy. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> it's such an interesting topic. You know, I did study little courses here and there about mindfulness. And it's really interesting. And I did a little bit of psychology as well. And I love uh, to, uh, you know, just to, to hear professionals like yourself, uh, you know, give advice and talk about, you know, how we can help ourselves uh, these days and what we are facing at this moment uh, globally. So is there any advice that you can give to people now about mindfulness? Yeah, I mean, I think, thank you, yeah, it's, it's a really difficult time, my clients are struggling, um, it's a difficult time to make sense, sense making, um, at a time like this, and I think um, one of the things I work with with clients is that their future has collapsed, that's the way it feels, like the future has collapsed, so everybody prepares for some kind of future, and now that future seems very altered. And so that's when the anxiety and the panic starts um, coming up. And a lot of what I work with is to help individuals recognize, first of all, that um, one of the suggestions is that it's just for today. I mean, it's a very recovery principle. But even in mindfulness, it's, it's, it's coming down to it's just in this moment. Can you stay present with what is, not try to change it, shift it? A lot of people think that mindfulness is getting rid of something, kind of having a clear mind. And we've got all these pictures that we see out there of these sort of Zen looking people. And that's not really at all what mindfulness is about. Um, it has a very, it's become almost like a Mac mindfulness. Everybody's doing an app or doing this. But mindfulness, the, the true definition is to pay attention on purpose to the present moment without judgment. And mm -hmm. one teacher goes further, to say knowing what is happening with um while it is happening without preference so 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 those two things are really important that can we meet the moment and change our relationship to things because we might not be able to actually change the actual say for example you're in a job that you hate or say for example in a, in a difficult relationship sometimes we we can't just move the chess pieces but we can change our internal relationship with that we can become calmer in the face of adversity. We become more resilient in the face. We can grieve our losses mm. um, like adults, you know, really face our sadness and our grief um, 
And that takes, that takes presence and it takes also an attitude. So attitudes of mindfulness are really important. We train certain practices in mindfulness, training attention, but we also train attitudinal aspects, which John kabat speaks about. So those would be things like patience and trust and beginner's mind, coming to something anew. Mm-hmm. Um, things like acceptance and letting be, not letting go. I know everybody hears this thing about letting go. But um, yeah, like John kabat says, if we were going to let go, we would have by now, but can we let be? So, so a little bit of kind of the suggestion, let me hone it in, is to have a routine, have a daily small practice, like 10 minute practice is enough to change the brain. Uh, neuroscience suggests that we can change the brain in 10 minutes a day. And to stay in an attitude of acceptance and kindness for yourself, self-care. Um, we'll come back to that, I'm sure, as we talk um, this morning. But I think those are the ones like, really simplify things, you know, get out of your head, simplify things. I think it's very difficult for people these days to, like you said, uh, people are afraid now to move Absolutely. forward. Yeah. And it, we can feel it. It's like it's there, it's in the air. It's sort of, uh, you know, it, it, it's difficult to explain, but I can also feel it around me because I have uh, kids on school and I speak to the parents and we speak about different uh, things going on now um, at the moment and lots of people are confused. They're like, they don't know really what to do, or what to expect. And I think it's really uh, helpful if you do, if you practice this mindfulness um, like I said, for 10 minutes every day, I think it's a good. Do you have an example? Do you have something that you can share with the viewers? An example of a practice? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we could we could either do a practice, you and I, at the end of this, or I could share a, a practice that you could um, share with, with your listeners or viewers. I think that um, would be great. Yeah, but I think one of the most important practices and, and what's really difficult with mindfulness is not to throw yourself into something that is unachievable, unattainable, and not that we try to strive for anything in mindfulness, but some people say, okay, well, I'll sit down and I'll try and do 30 minute practice and then recognize how busy their minds is and how difficult that is. So we start off with something as simple as a three minute breathing space, something where you can actually focus in on um, the aspects of mindfulness that are really critical. So what What the science suggests is that, and what the literature suggests is that our minds are always active. So on the the, the study that Richard Davidson and his team did were that 47% of the day we are on autopilot in the way that we're not focused on what we're actually doing. So even as you and I are sitting here, your mind might be jumping to all sorts of things, which is so normal, might be jumping to the next thing. And it's really difficult to stay focused. So what we try to do we in our heads a lot is we try to um, really focus in on the body. So the body is the first anchor of mindfulness because it is here. It's always with us. So the sensations in the body are useful. So something like a body scan, a short body scan, a body and breath meditation or a feet on the floor. These are really valuable practices to ground. So the first thing we want to do is ground our mind in our body, which sounds really quite strange. But what it means is just using the body as an opportunity to be grounded. And I think we need groundedness because we seem to be sort of all over, you know, um, either leaning too far forward, as I say, which means I'm always trying to help someone, try to focus on someone else, or we get so exhausted from that, we lean too far back, we isolate, we move away. And what would it be like to just be grounded and still and clear and just take one thing at a time, even if the mind's all over the show, just bring it back to the body and breath. That's what mindfulness teaches. That's the beauty of this practice and the and the, the deep teaching of the practice, yeah. Oh, well, that is some very vital information that everybody can use in their daily practices. I would like to share screen your website. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there are lots of little resources on the website that people can actually use straight off the bat um, i've seen i've seen and then i was like oh we can actually go there 
Where would that be resource? If you go, if you go to, if you go to the home page, so go to the home page, okay, and if you scroll down a little and scroll down, there you'll see. Now you'll see. Try, try the breathing space. Um, so there's a little practice you can do straight off the bat, um, and you can just download that. And then if you go to the read more section um, and you go down there and you go down a little bit, these scrolling down, there you go. So now you've got some podcasts. This is the Unmasking Codependency. There's a longevity interview. And I just did a, um, an interview with someone at, um, I think it was Cape Talk. I can't remember which one this was about. What's the difference between enabling um, someone and supporting them. So it's quite a useful interview around codependency. Um, there's an there's a longevity article on what mindfulness is if you want to have a read there. Ah. But the resources also, I've got a lot of books and stuff in the resource list you can look at. And that's a, um, a podcast I did and under the resources, there's a whole list of resources. Let's go there. Different books you can get an idea of what those all are about. Um, so especially the, the codependency stuff and what mindfulness is. Then I've got all the websites and other resources and some links to um, what self-compassion is. And then this last one is something that I work a lot with clients is the window of tolerance. And that's a very useful tool just to already know off the bat what, what the window of tolerance is and whether you're in your window of tolerance or hypervigilant or hypo where you actually feel withdrawn and depressed and distressed and dissociated from all the stress. Oh. So very useful little tool to take a look at. Oh, so if you would like to know a little bit more about Mandy as well, you go to about, and then if you would like to know a little bit more about these books, uh, you go to resources up here. And at home we said uh, there is some, breathing uh, exercises right yes there's so, some breathing exercises um i have another website that i teach mbsr on and there are lots of meditations you can download on the home page it's called mbsr-south.co.za um, and if you go in there there are lots of uh, meditations you can also just download um yeah, and, I'm, and what I want to put together is a, a digital program. I'm, I'm working on that where you could just download the meditations and the videos. So I'm going to work on that. It's nearly done. Um, but my invitation and encouragement is just to start with a three-minute breathing space. If you've never done any meditation, can you do three minutes a day and, and see if that would help? Yeah. I think this is a great resource for everyone just to go there. So if you feel in the need to do some mindfulness, uh, go to Mandy's website. And I'll share the other one as well on a banner on this video. So thank you so much, Mandy, for sharing that and talking about yeah. your website. Uh, now a quick one. Yeah, I mean, you've got so many years uh, doing what you, you are doing currently doing and so many experiences and teachings but what's your long-term goal for yourself yeah you know um it's been such an interesting journey because i think going into uh, turning older as a woman you know um things have shifted so much for me there used to be so much ambition i worked in organizations i studied um, I continue to study. I think it's part of, of just who I am. Um, but what I've started uh, really feeling into is much more creativity as I've got older. And I'm excited about launching new sort of programs and ideas around um, what it means to be a woman in, in, a, in, in the world that we currently live in. So if you look at long-term goals for me, it's much more going inward and writing, exploring programs that I can, or, or um, I also would love to run retreat spaces for women um, to, to actually get women together and explore these practices in a five day, six day uh, retreat space. Um, I'm also really curious around running groups. I'm currently running a feeling tone group. Um, it's, it's 11 women and it's really deep and beautiful. Um, so I like depth facilitation and I see myself in that space 
as I grow old in, in, in the long term. Um, and I see myself much more creatively focused. So perhaps even um, writing, exploring new processes and programs. Um, I've just finished a, a study course with Mark Williams, who's writing his new book um, based on his a, a previous book called Peace in a Frantic World. And that has been a very exciting ongoing offering. So I definitely will be doing the, the feeling tone course going forward, um, mindfulness-based feeling tone. So those are kind of where I'm landing. I'll probably carry on with the Stellenbosch because I do enjoy it, um, supervising. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a different space. I'm doing a lot of cold swimming. So I highly recommend cold swimming okay. as we get older as women getting fitter. Um, I feel more fit now than I was maybe in my early 40s. Um, I think, as you know, on my website, I survived cancer when I was 42. So um, I've been 10 years in remission from that, but I've really had to look after myself. So those are my priorities. Um, and obviously my marriage, my husband, I have two stepsons that um, I adore. And yeah, so my focus is very much on being grounded, being clear, being of service, really being of service. I love serving other people as well. I love it. It just gives me that extra motivation to, um, you know, for myself to do other projects. So Beautiful. Uh, if I feel I help somebody, I feel like I can now focus on something for myself as well. You know, it's give and take. And, and I absolutely, that's why we started LEC, is to support women out there. Women that's been through cancer treatments, women that's been through divorce, uh, difficult times, loss of a spouse, you know. We are there for women worldwide. That's why it's called enrich, not just by making money, but enriching your own life. And I would like to um, say thank you so much, Manny, for being on our show and giving some advice to women out there. And Absolutely. Now, thank you for inviting me. It was so nice to eventually get in contact with you. And um, I would like, the thing that I would like to just, uh, if you have some advice for women out there, they would like to go maybe into, um, because to go yourself into a mindfulness course, you know, can help you a lot. What do you think about that? Is there, there any advice you can give to women if they would like to go towards, you know, doing a course in mindfulness? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would start with a foundational course and um, just an introduction into mindfulness. Um, the, the, the standard introduction is mindfulness-based stress reduction, eight-week course or mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, which is usually for depression, if people are struggling with depression. But my sense is also to know your willingness and your capacity, be trauma-informed. You know, if you've been through a divorce or a recent diagnosis of something that's really life-changing, be very gentle with yourself with mindfulness. It's not for everybody. And it's certainly, when we do our pre-course interviews, it's certainly not for anyone in a current depressive episode, a current addiction. Um, you need to be fairly in, in a fairly good, well-rounded space to, to go into mindfulness. So trauma, trauma and mindfulness need to be very carefully um, looked at. Um, David Trelevin wrote a book, Trauma Informed Mindfulness. It's really important that you know the difference between those things. So I'll do, if I if I work with someone with mindfulness, I do a, a pre-course and we chat about where you are. So know your willingness. All the women I work with are so willing. We are, you know, type A personalities, perfectionists. Um, women are uh, incredible. They're just incredible. But their capacity might be really limited. And sometimes they don't have the honesty to know where their capacity is. And, um, you know, that's part of what, what the work I do is to also recognize what is your capacity. And perhaps just do much shorter practices and, and be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself. You know, uh, let yourself exhale sometimes and just... Do what you can as opposed to adding more on, you know, maybe remove some things um, mm -hmm. in your life that you no longer need by setting boundaries. Yeah, I've been there. I At one stage, I had so much on my plate. I didn't Absolutely. know, you know, uh, 
touch and go, touch and go the whole time. And then yeah. I didn't know, I think um, something happened. Uh, of course, I also went through a health scare. So yeah. that time I actually stepped back and I said, this is it. I need to figure out what I want, what I want to do. So God really put it on my heart to help women. And that's how it all started Beautiful. through Ladies in the Human Cup. And I really, although I'm a photographer, I still do my photography. I still help brands out there to do products, uh, shoots, and food photography. But, you know, I, I do not forget about the time when you need to just chillax, just chill with maybe a hobby, like something that you like to do. And, you know, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying a balance. And I think that's good for everyone, just to get that balance in your life. Now, I would like to know, is there anything else that you would like to share with us, like a social media account that we maybe did not mention? Now, everybody knows where to find you on your website. But yeah. is there another space where we can connect with you? So funny you say that, um, Zelda, because... Um, you know, there was a resistance in me right from the beginning with social media. I've never been on Facebook. I went on Instagram for 10 minutes and just couldn't bear it. And I have a LinkedIn and I have my website and majority of people come to me through referrals. Um, and it's interesting, you know, you mentioned God, higher power. I really do trust that. I do trust that. Um, I've, I've had a good, you know, my business has worked since I, I worked in organizations. So I go through referrals. So my website, LinkedIn, um, I don't do Instagram, I don't do Facebook, I went off WhatsApp for six months to just get off social media and I must just, you know, invite you to maybe look at some of those digital detoxes. Um, there's something so profoundly toxic about that, that way of being um, that I, I somehow just seem a little averse to it. But um, yeah, I, I also just want to mention, it was funny when you're looking at the resource pages, you know, this is not, a. Uh, I, I don't subscribe to Buddhism or Buddhist, Buddhist um, this is a Buddhist practice mindfulness, it comes, you know, it has an, a, a deep lineage, but, um, you know, this is a secular mindfulness, and so Christians, people of religion, um, you know, uh, that I work with, uh, within that framework, definitely, definitely, so, um, it's interesting now that I looked at the website how I'd probably want to relook at some of those resources when I saw them quite confronting even looking now because I put them on so long ago and things have shifted and changed for me in terms of that and, and where I land um, so yeah I'll go and have a look at that right now but I just wanted to name that also this is a secular practice um, and and yeah, I hope you find me. If you want to find me, you'll find me. For sure. Yeah. On your website, there is, um, you know, about contact details. You can yeah. Find yeah. So if we, yeah. Uh, just to mention it again, it's mindfulinsights.co.za. And then yeah. the other yeah. one uh, you've mentioned, um, I will also put it on a banner. So Mandy, that's it. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much for all the information and I really hope that people will reach out to you. Uh, they feel the need to, and um, you know, we are going through a very difficult time very currently difficult. Um, all over the world, like we uh, talked earlier, not just in South Africa, worldwide. There is always things going on and anxiety and things that we need to deal with especially if we have you know children we, we also think about our children and that kinds of as parents we need to show them that we are calm and collected and that we can handle this through you know um, mindfulness maybe practice but thank you so much again for all your advice everything that you have uh, Mention it's a pleasure. Today. And yeah. Thank you, Zelda. Yeah. And, and I just want to acknowledge the work that you're doing in the world and um, the contribution. And, you know, just even if you touch one or two lives, that's enough. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of really a privilege. So thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. And 
that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I can just reach out to somebody and then yeah. with professionals like yourself, helping people out there, that is amazing. If you would like to, we invite you once again to write an article for the Ladies and Beauty Club uh, magazine. It's online and it's a great source because then you can read about uh, women in business, coaches, and also take a little bit of advice uh, from the side. Thank you, Mandy. And Thank have you. a lovely day. Take care. Okay. Thank you.